Hey everyone watching, this is Shaylin from Misophonia International, and today I want to talk about misophonia treatment and, you know, the lack thereof. So specifically, I want to talk about why would you go to a clinician or a therapist if there is currently no treatment for misophonia? And that's a valid question because for some people that might seem a little absurd. And I want to first start off with you don't have to. If you feel like a clinician is not going to help you in your circumstances, you don't have to go. There's no rule saying that misophonia needs a therapist or an audiologist or a neurologist. But, but you should go to a doctor and make sure you don't have some other co occurring condition that's making it worse. I am not a doctor, but I do think that we need to go to doctors to make sure that it's not just the misophonia causing these symptoms. So on that note, you might want to go to a clinician to make sure something else isn't wrong. And on the note of audiologists, lots of people go and they get these sound maskers and stuff like this. Personally, I'm going to say that I think they are a waste of money. I'm sorry to audiologists, but I think spending $4,000 for something that takes away the sound when you could spend a hundred dollars on some noise canceling little earbuds and just wear those or get you some loop earplugs do that instead I'm sorry audiologists are just trying to help they're doing their job they're doing what they know best but until I see a study proving that these earbuds are beyond measure of a doubt better for misophonia than just some loop earplugs or some earbuds that even come with your phone, like the AirPods are now um, noise canceling and so are Samsung Buds. So, you know, don't spend $4,000 on sound generators if you don't have to. There's other ways, especially today. There's more and more companies that are developing earbuds and earplugs that might work. So try that first. And, you know, if none of these work, then by all means, try the generators, but I'm not on board. So when we move into kind of counseling and therapy for misophonia, and I am currently in school to be a therapist, I'm doing a master's in counseling. And I want to say that you have to be really careful which counselor you're looking for because in school, no one is going to tell you as a therapist about misophonia. And I can verify that true. It's not happening. So on that note, you can find providers that do care about misophonia. We're building our list all the time. Any provider that takes the misophonia coping skills class on misophonia international, we try to get them on the provider network so people in those areas can see that there's providers. And the way providers work for anyone who's not aware, most clinicians can only practice in the province or territory or state, sorry, I'm Canadian, that they are licensed in. So what this means is even if it's digital therapy, in a lot of areas, this clinician still can't practice cross state or provincial lines. So it can be even harder to find a therapist for misophonia, which leads into why we offer the coping skills class. And I produce them as Misophonia International and Dr. Brout has generously joined us. And our, our, our Misophonia coping skills class is for parents, adults, and clinicians. Sorry, I'm talking fast. Basically what that means is if you're the parent of a child with misophonia that wants to help them with coping skills, if you're a clinician taking on patients, or if you are an adult like me, or even a young adult or a teenager that wants to learn more about misophonia, then this class can be helpful in coping skills. So just kind of touch on that. What is the difference between coping skills and therapy? Therapy is a very specific guided session. It's based on practicing clinical roles, driving me nuts, sorry. And therapy basically is usually a one-on-one -on -one thing. Maybe they'll do direct CBT, strength training, uh, Alderian therapy, humanistic approaches. There's different approaches, there's different modalities. And basically they use that perspective to talk to the client, to kind of work out a 
treatment plan, but it doesn't have to even mean treatment. Basically, they kind of work together and, you know, they try to resolve the problem. For misophonia, of course, resolving the problem when it's physiological is impossible. You you can't think away misophonia. Believe me, I have tried. If I could think this thing away, I would be doing great. I would have no triggers. I wouldn't wear earplugs all the time. Ah, my ears hurt. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, you can't think this away. So on that note, why would something from a therapeutic or a therapy perspective work? Why are you going to a therapist? What can help are coping skills. And some therapists are trained in what's called sensory regulation. And that is what RRR is based on. The RRR is regulate, reason, and reassure. There's psychoeducation based in there, which means teaching the client. Of course, I don't want to use the word client because RRR doesn't have to be in a therapy position. So RRR is about psychoeducation. The person who has misophonia is learning what misophonia is about their brain, about the physiological aspect. And then from there, it can help reassure because you know, okay, this is just, it's the disorder I have. It's not the person. We're taking that power away. And any co-occurring disorders that are had can be dealt with in therapy with a licensed professional. Obviously, if you have co-occurring OCD, depression, anxiety, you want to get those helped first. Even if that therapist does not understand misophonia, they should be able to understand the co-occurring disorders that are going on. So you can get treatment for one thing and kind of not the other. That is totally possible. So as for RRR, I've talked about it a lot. I do truly believe in it. I mean, that is why we're presenting it on Misophonia International. The next class is going to be in June 2023. So if you're watching this before June, you can head on over to the website and register. I'll put up the link. It's a two-night class for $250. And it includes all three manuals for RRR. That's the clinician, adults, and parents book. You get instant access to that for life. Just download your PDF, put it on any device you want. There's no restrictions on that. There's also worksheets that will go with it, which should be helpful to go along with the book. But that said, this is not just me trying to sell you something. I also want to point out that misophonia not having a treatment in itself can hurt. It can emotionally hurt. And it hurts me to know that <laughs> there's no treatment some days because I'll be honest, some days are worse than others. Some days are bloody hell. And I mean, just to talk about it, I know spring is coming and it's been a long winter, a long, 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 long winter. So I feel like I should be excited. I should be happy that winter's almost over. I mean, winter sucks. I don't like winter. But instead, I'm sitting here thinking, when is the first lawnmower going to turn on? And where I live, I live in army housing, and they have people that take care of the, like, general lawns for the community. So they ride these giant, giant ride-on lawnmowers, these commercial mowers, that are half broken, they're old, they haven't been serviced in years, and these god-awful things sound like a mix of a lawnmower with rocks rattling and an airplane. They are the most horrible sound. My fight flight instantly goes up. At this point, the way I deal with it is I see on these days it happens. Sorry, I dinged my nails. I'm sorry. It started at 7 a.m. And they go and they go and they go around. They leave. They come back around 10-ish a.m., and two because it's such a big area and then 7 p.m they're still going like it's just 12 hours of will i be triggered by this mower and some weeks they like do it two or three days and it's i can't wait to move that's all i can say that god sorry little self-disclosure story on misophonia 
So basically, to answer the main question of this video, why would I go to a therapist if there's no treatment for misophonia? Basically, you would go to get coping skills, sensory regulation. You can learn about why there's no treatment, what is going on in your brain. Now, all of this, all of this is under the assumption that the clinician you go to understands what misophonia is. And if they do not, I suggest educating them. You can send them some free guides from our website. I'm going to post those as well. There is a clinician's guide. You can just print it off. It's a little PDF, a little booklet. Bring it in. Teach them what misophonia is. Maybe even get them to take the RRR class because we will put them on our network afterwards. And, you know, they can reach out to more people. They can learn from other clinicians and they can kind of get a sense of what the disorder is. Encourage them to read the literature. Lit sorry, literature, literature. I'm tongue tied this morning. Encourage all this, but you know, I hate to say it. Some clinicians just won't go for it. They're busy. They don't want to learn. So walk out that door and don't give them your money or your time. Because honestly, if a clinician is not willing to spend the time learning how to best help you, bye. Like, just shut that door in their face and don't come back. I guess don't be rude. I mean, be rude if you want. I, I've been a little rude. <laughs> but as someone who's training to be a clinician, like, I, I still have some time left. I've got, like, another year with the practicum included. But as someone who's training to be a clinician, all I can think is we're taught. We're supposed to listen to the client, respect them, respect their worldview, respect that they are the expert on themselves. And then I hear these horror stories of clinicians that are not doing that and just walk out. Just don't go back. Just don't go back. And I will say if it is a provider on our provider list and they treat you horribly, they suggest like exposure therapy or something like that, shoot me an email at shaylin at misophoniainternational.com and we will look into it and possibly remove them from the list because that's not okay. <laughs>